Tiger fans, I do believe we have a new best win of the Eli Drinkwitz era for Missouri. Plus, like everybody else, I'm going to throw a lot of praise at Cody Schrader's way. Coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks. If your team wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And obviously, we got to get started on this program talking about, in my opinion, the best win of the Eli Drinkwitz era. Said that about Kentucky after Missouri dominated the Wildcats after the first quarter or so of that game. Well, I think this is even better than that, especially coming off what was a disappointing loss to Georgia? Certainly not disappointing in terms of how Missouri played, just disappointing and dang it, we were this close to taking down the, the two-time defending national champions. So for Missouri to come back in the very next week against a, a really good Tennessee team, by the way, and perform like it did here today, man, that's just a massive credit to me to Eli Drinkwitz, to all the leadership in the locker room for the Tigers, I, I really could not be more impressed. And especially I could not be more impressed with the Missouri defense. Going from giving up 66 points and 724 yards to Tennessee last year, well, Missouri literally cut that yardage in half less than half, going to 350 this year, and obviously 66 points to seven. Now there's your headline number right there. What an unbelievable performance by the Missouri defense. And you know, even that touchdown, I'll be honest, that, that was questionable if that even counted. I, might sh I had a pretty good angle of it actually from my seats. Maybe I'll bring that up later in the show. But quite honestly, whether that, sh whether that touchdown counted or not, just an unbelievable performance by the Missouri defense, and really they did to Tennessee what I think Tennessee did to a lot of opponents all season, which is ran the ball down their throats, stuffed the run, and basically Tennessee had no answer. Honestly, Missouri's defensive line not only won the line of scrimmage, they dominated the line of scrimmage against what is to me as good of an offensive line especially in terms of run blocking, as there is in the entire conference. Now, others might push back against that, but I'm just telling you the numbers are what they are. And for basically every the top three running backs in the SEC as of a couple weeks ago, just in terms of yards before contact, hey, that's an offensive line stat. They were all Tennessee volunteers. Well, those three Tennessee volunteer running backs yesterday combined for 13 carries for 47 yards. That is just complete and utter domination. And once again, Missouri just took what Tennessee did best and did it better. We stuffed it down their throats and stopped them from doing basically anything on the ground game as well. And speaking of running it down their throats, my goodness, Cody Schrader, how does this kid somehow seem to get better each and every week, it would seem, despite taking all of the carries for all intents and purposes, all of the snaps. Does he ever get tired? Who is his trainer? Do I need, I need to get in on his, his workout regimen. Don't get me wrong, I'd probably suffer a massive heart attack on day two, but it, it seems like it would be a good idea. I'd probably look good with my shirt off for at least day one. But in all seriousness, Schrader here, 
just the tenth player in FBS history to have 200 yards rushing and 100 receiving in a single game. And this is from ESPN Stats and Info. If you cut that down to against AP ranked opponents, he's only the third guy to do it, joining Kansas's Devin Neal last season and also Christian McCaffrey. You may have heard of him. He's pretty darn good in the NFL. So for Cody Schrader to have 18 carries for 105 yards and three receptions for 93 yards all in the first half. Just an unbelievable performance by Schrader. And a lot of those reception yards there in the first half came in the first play there of a two-minute drill, got Missouri practically into Tennessee territory and set up what at the time seemed like a really, really important field goal. Well, ultimately, Tennessee was shut out in the second half. Missouri gets a pick six in the fourth quarter, just puts a big old exclamation point on the victory and causing Josh Heupel to suffer his lowest scoring game of his time here at Tennessee. So for Missouri to be just utterly dominated in this series the last few years here and to come back and flip the script on Tennessee, man, you got to love that, of course. But my goodness, Cody Schrader. Once again, I'll never forget the first time I saw Cody Schrader. It was in the spring game, his first spring game, 2021. Missouri said sat a lot of its best defensive players in that game. Schrader played a lot in the second half of that ball game against what I would say second and third string defenders. So, you know, you want to take that kind of stuff with a grain of salt. At the same time, that one of the takeaways from that game is, hey, that kid from uh, Truman State, man, he ran hard, didn't he? He runs pretty darn good. And But it was easy to just kind of go, eh, it's spring football. A cute story, but, you know, we've kind of seen stories like that from spring football in the past from fairly unheralded guys before and nothing really comes of it but Cody Schrader just refuses to be denied it's really it's really impressive what he's done again is he's got to be in the best shape of anybody in college football I've I've been saying all season until the last couple weeks here hey we want to maybe give Schrader a little bit of a break every once in a while well I'm just going to shut up on that particular take because Cody Schrader keeps proving me wrong. Apparently, the more carries you give him, the better he gets. And I I just, I couldn't be more impressed with this team and obviously Cody Schrader in particular. By the way, last season in Knoxville, there's no doubt that Josh Heupel in Tennessee, they had their foot foot on the gas pedal until the final whistle. There's no doubt about that. They were trying to put up as many points and yards as they could and make a statement at Missouri's expense. You could even say they were running up the score on Missouri. And that's not a complaint, by the way. I didn't complain about it at the time. Was it embarrassing? Yes. Was it frustrating? Absolutely. But your job as a football team is to stop the other team from scoring. So guess what? It's on you to stop them. If they want to try to keep playing, you signed up for the game. You signed up for 60 minutes of football. I don't want to hear any crying about it. So, but having said all that, it, in, in light of all of, of what happened last season, you did have to love the pettiness by Eli Drinkwitz when it was 36 to 7 with 40 seconds left. Tennessee lining up for a field goal. Eli Drinkwitz burns a timeout to ice the kicker in a 36 to 7 ball game. I, for one, thought that was hilarious. I, I absolutely loved the pettiness by Drinkwitz. Hey, if you want to keep playing, you want to, you want to kick a field goal fine fine and dandy you want to run into touchdown on us last year cool I guess we're going to keep playing too so I'm going to try to ice your kicker just to prove a little bit of a point here I for one loved the petty move by Eli Drinkwitz keep it going bud honestly that was fantastic and by the way on that lone Tennessee touchdown are we sure that shouldn't have been overturned by replay I don't know maybe the broadcast didn't have the best angle of it But I had a pretty good angle of that touchdown for Tennessee, so I want to bring up that play for you and more here coming up in just a little bit. But first, I want to tell you about a prize picks because, quite honestly, sometimes daily fantasy for new players can be a little intimidating. Well, that's why I'm here to tell you about prize picks because it's the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports and with basketball season here you can now pick combo projections across football 
and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues, for instance, LeBron James and Travis Kelsey in the same projections. Just go less or more. It really is that simple. So go to prizepicks.com slash Locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. It's prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. And passion, drive, and patience. It's what brings home the winning trophy and also what keeps your ride or die vehicle alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts, for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Now, if you've been listening to this program a lot, if you're an everyday, or you're certainly well aware of what type of defense Missouri generally plays, an aggressive man-to-man -man style. And certainly on the one touchdown you saw from Tennessee, well, that's exactly what Missouri did. And honestly, I was a little bit surprised that we didn't see more of, of just some deep shots from the Volunteers, quite honestly. You look at this snap here for Missouri, for Missouri and Tennessee here, as I obviously am stalling here to get up my video. Hey, there we go. I did it. It's a miracle. Well, obviously an aggressive man-to-man -man style here from Missouri. And again, this is there's a lot of respect here, I'd say, for Ennis Rakestraw and Chris Abrams Drain, the fact that they weren't taking more deep shots and also give Missouri credit for not giving Joe Milton a lot of time here. But obviously a really good throw here by Milton. He puts this ball, I mean, right on the freaking money, number one. So give him all the credit in the world. Abrams Drain, as you might expect, is right on him. I mean, this is really good coverage. Just gets some slight separation here at the last minute and just gets right under what is a perfectly thrown ball by Joe Milton. So give them all the credit in the world here. At the same time, watch this ball here at the end. Does that thing not look like it comes out and hits the ground, squirts out a little bit there? Let's even zoom in a little bit here. To me... As he rolls to the ground here, that ball is pretty obviously moving on the on the ground here. So to me, th this touchdown probably shouldn't have even counted. I don't know if they didn't have a great look at, look at it here on the broadcast, but that's a pretty obvious incompletion from my angle there. But I don't know. Perhaps the, you think the guy got his hand under there. To me, that's pretty obviously incomplete. Not a huge deal by any stretch of the imagination. Obviously, Missouri wins the game easily. Anyway, I would just like to point out that in a game where Missouri played incredible defense, really good coverage there by Drain. It took an absolutely perfect throw for this to even be a touchdown. I'm not even sure it should have counted. Well, after the game, Cody Schrader was saying that he's been telling Brady Cook, hey, buddy, don't forget about me in the passing game. Get me the ball. Come on. What's going on? Kind of a playful back and forth between the two, apparently, where Brady Cook basically tells him, hey, bud, get open in the scramble drill. In other words, that's ah, probably not happening. We're not throwing you the ball that much. We do have Luther Burden and Theo Weiss, Mookie Cooper, Marquise Johnson, many other good receivers on this ball club. But you know what? After yesterday, Cody Schrader keeps proving people wrong. Apparently, he's a weapon in the passing game as well. And sure enough, hey, first snap, you know what? Schrader immediately makes an impact in the passing game here. And indeed, it was in the scramble drill, just as Brady Cook 
had predicted. Well, Schrader goes in motion here out to the right. Clearly not his first read. Cook doesn't really like what he sees here and decides to take off to the right. Schrader just, you notice what he's doing here. He's not exactly looking for the football here early in this play. He's going doot to do. Okay. Oh, Brady's running. I guess I'll start running too. And he does. Finds himself wide open, catches the ball, and unfortunately steps out of bounds or else we might have had an immediate touchdown there for Missouri. But still, obviously a great opening play for the Tigers. Cody Schrader showing he can catch the ball too, by golly. Is there anything this young man cannot do? Well, other than stay in bounds on this play, but that's okay. Great opening play here by Missouri. And that wasn't the only scramble drill that Missouri would see on this day. A nice one to Marquise Johnson later in the game as well. I've been telling people, hey, Marquise Johnson is not just some sprinter, although he is that, a guy who won the 100-meter dash in high school at the highest level in Texas, but a guy who made a really good play on the ball in that scramble drill too, in my opinion. The guy is a receiver. He's not just a sprinter. And while the people of the Smoky Mountains obviously did not want that Mizzou football smoke yesterday, well, our visitors from the west side of Tennessee, the Memphis Tigers, we're not quite as accommodating on the basketball court as Missouri obviously took a really disappointing loss to Memphis, but honestly, I'm really not that discouraged whatsoever, and I think this basketball team is going to be just fine. So if you're thinking about jumping off the bridge, metaphorically speaking, of Missouri basketball, please don't do it. I'm going to talk you off the ledge here coming up in just a little bit. But first, I want to tell you about FanDuel, where you got to score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, well, there's no better time to get in on the action and obviously the action was nice for Missouri yesterday an easy cover by the underdog Tigers never totally understood why Missouri was a slight underdog there especially at home I think we proved our point yesterday but you got to visit fanduel.com slash locked on and again kick off the NFL season in style it is FanDuel official partner of the NFL so Mizzou basketball, unfortunately, took an ugly loss to Memphis on Friday night. And I say mostly unfortunately because, wow, a great crowd, basically. Well, it was a sellout crowd, basically every, for most, for all intents and purposes, every seat in that place was filled up. So you would just would have liked to have seen a better performance there by Missouri. He only made five field goals in the entire second half, but Ultimately, though, I just don't think it's that big of a deal because sometimes, hey, when you shoot a ton of three-pointers, number one, as Missouri is going to do, you're just going to have some off nights on occasion. We saw it last season. Heck, remember when, remember when Missouri was completely demolished at home by Kansas last year? Honestly, that Memphis game feels a lot like that to me. It feels like a learning experience. And I think a lot of November basketball under Dennis Gates – is going to be experimental a little bit. Missouri played 13 guys on Friday. I just can't imagine that that's going to be the strategy come January when we're into SEC play. And again, give give Memphis's defense a ton of credit. I'm actually glad we got to see this caliber opponent this early in the season. I'll be honest, I liked Missouri to win on Friday because – I just thought, hey, Memphis will probably be a better team by the end of the season. With eight transfers, four freshmen, I just would not have expected a group to look that locked in defensively in the first week of the season. Hey, give Memphis all the credit in the world for how they played in that ball game. But again, to me, I just think Missouri is trying to figure out who it is at this point. For people out there who are frustrated that Caleb Grill has been off with his shot in the early part of the season, the last thing in the world I would do is sit him out right now or take him out of the starting lineups, as I've seen a few people suggest. Guys, 
Caleb Grill is a proven shooter at this level, and I really have been impressed with the rest of Grill's game. He's been a good rebounder, a good defender, good hustler. I think there's a little bit of Jason Sutherland in his game, and I mean that in the nicest way I possibly can. I think Grill's shot will be just fine. He knocked a shot down at the end of the game. Who knows? He'll probably get going after that. I wouldn't worry about his shot whatsoever. I do think it's fair, though, to maybe worry a little bit about, hey, where is the Kobe Brown type player who's going to bail out shots, bail out bad possessions at the end of the shot clock? Not sure we have that guy right now. In the first half, it was certainly Sean East. He was doing, he was playing tremendously well in the first half. And again, if his shot is going to be going down from three point land, in particular off the dribble, man, he is going to be awfully hard to guard one on one. No question about that. But again, just a lot of experimentation here. Some of it good, some of it bad. I would honestly like to see Trent Pierce in a lineup with Aiden Shaw a little bit because that's just a lineup that has a lot of length, number one. I think defensively, I actually liked what I saw from Trent Pierce. He missed his three shots, definitely wasn't bashful about putting him up there, had a three-pointer go in and out. Again, long-term, big picture here. Trent Pierce's shot seems like it's going to be just fine. I think he's going to be a big-time bucket getter for Missouri. But I was just – he wasn't quite as skinny as I was expecting, believe it or not. He looked a little bit thicker than I thought, and just his body movements out there, big picture defensively, I think Pierce is going to be able to to hang in there maybe better than I think most true freshmen would. And finally, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I didn't, didn't really notice any offensive fouls or charges once again. There was one in the first game that I can recall. I don't recall any offensive fouls specifically charging violations being called in the Missouri Memphis game. Don't get me wrong. I thought the referees were fine in that ball game. I actually thought the game had a decent flow to it, despite the fact that Missouri could not buy a bucket whatsoever in the second half, not complaining about the officials whatsoever. Just noticing that again, really seems like college basketball. They're attempting to officiate the charge call much differently this season. We'll see if that actually sticks all the way through March. But hey, thanks for sticking with this program here on a Sunday morning, if that's when you're listening to it. Hey, fun game yesterday. Glad to be, glad to get past my hangover. I know you are too. So thanks as always for joining me here on Locked on Mizzou. Thanks to you every dayers. And thanks for telling a friend that the show is free and available wherever you get podcasts. So until next time, I'm John Miller and thanks for listening to Locked on Mizzou.